Hey everybody, welcome to this Monday's NTOP Live. Uh, today, we're going to talk about uh, conformal isogrid ribbing, uh, specifically on a low bypass turbine engine casing, but just kind of in general as well, and what we can do with it, how we create it, and how it's really powerful to do an NTOP. Now, isogrids traditionally in the rectangular sense are fairly easy to create in traditional tools. Uh, they become a little bit difficult when we do something like a conformal ice grid. Uh, so to do that, uh, first I want to show you how it's done and how fast it is to do in NTOP before we get into the actual application that I want to show. But essentially, we need to pick a face. We need to come up here, type in the name of our block, and then we're about 90% of the way there. Once we just do a couple of things in here, We've got our parameterization, give it a unit type, and now we just have to give it some divisions. So we can do something like this, and now right away we have a conformal isogrid, which we can use as some really lightweight ribbing to really strengthen up our part. And this isn't uh, one you know one time uh, thing. You can do it to any face we want. So if I swap out the CAD face here. It's going to do it to this one here as well for me, even though this one is even more, it's got a bit of a more of a round instead of just the tapered conical approach here. So it's really easy and really fast to create these isogrid ribs in NTOP, uh, but NTOP has some other advantages too that we can take advantage of. And in this file, what I've done is actually done a bit of a, you know, design exploration, but automatically. So I've taken it, I've created a workflow that I give it uh, my CAD face, I give it um, a couple of different divisions here. So I say I want to find the parameters that give me the lightest but the strongest ribbing uh, so that I can get the most optimal parts, right? Because every pound saved on an engine casing is, you know, a couple thousands of dollars saved in fuel. So thinking like that, what I did was I took it, it runs this, and since I'm giving it three different options here, it actually is going to create three lattices. And what that looks like is here where they're all kind of stacked on top of each other. Uh, and it does that, but you can break them out. So I create these lattices, and one thing we want to do is make sure that they have these nice holes here. And these holes are used for mounting other instruments. You know, the engine casing has fuel lines and, and all these other things, and traditionally these holes are used as mounting locations. So not only can I have this create three different iterations of this for me, it's going to also size it, put these holes exactly where they need to be for three different uh, you know, sizing. So what that looks like is here's a different version. Again, these holes are all placed in the right location. And again, with this third one. So now I can create these designs really fast. We can go up here, we can make some changes. We can make some, some really drastic changes if we want to just to really see the effect that this is going to have. And now it's going to render out my final one down here. But now I'm just running through these iterations, uh, and it's going to create these parts for me without me having to do anything, right? I set up this workflow once, and it's able to be used, you know, a thousand times if I wanted to be able to use. So now it created three new ones for me without having to do anything at all, really. And this workflow didn't take much time to set up. But how do we know what is the best answer here, right? Traditionally, you go to some form of simulation. So in this example here, I took the exact same file, uh, the exact same iterations of all of that, but instead of ending with the creation of that geometry, I actually uh, merged it back onto the part, meshed it, and ran a static analysis, right? This isn't anything special. It's just to show you guys the fact that we can create this whole workflow uh, with these isogrids uh, to find the best uh, answer pretty much automatically, right? That's saving us a lot of design time. So now it's creating these three lattices like it did in, in the previous file, right? We have the same one. And then it's taking it, it's actually creating three meshes here. Uh, and when it creates these, these meshes, it's able to, to automatically as well, and here they are stacked on top of each other, uh, they're able to also take them and just automatically run the simulation. So now we can come down here and take a look at our final answer and say, okay, which one of these iterations has the lowest stress? 
what effect did changing my divisions radially or lengthwise and all that sort of stuff. And you can do that without having to do much effort. And this could be, you know, I did a basic static analysis here, but it could be modal, it could be thermal, whatever properties you need to check for to find the best part, it can just be done automatically. And that's really the power of the reusable workflows in Entop. But um, I did it a little bit different uh, in the sense that I used lists. So I did a bit of list processing, which has a lot of power. And uh, you might not have seen a lot of examples with it. Um, now, this is a pretty great thing to be able to do. These isogrids, as I said, can be tricky. So we're saving some time, which means we're saving some money. And not only that, we're getting the best part. So the best bang for our buck. Um, that's what I wanted to talk to you guys about and show you. It's not the, the craziest end top lab I've ever had, but it's a really awesome one to get your mind flowing, right? Uh, I want to see what you guys come up with with this idea where we can create uh, list processed automatic design exploration tools just inside of end top. Um, I think it's really awesome and a really powerful thing you guys should be taking advantage of. Now, before we end today, what I want to do is go ahead and uh, recap. So what we take, took a look at today was the ease of creating these conformal isogrids inside of NTOP. And you can back up a second here. Uh, I meant, wanted to show this off where I took this workflow again. And not only did uh, I apply it to a much more complex part, uh, I did this mostly to show to you guys in a little bit more context. So we, here we have a fully you know hashed out low bypass uh, turbo, turbo fan engine. And I put some structural ribbing on that casing. It can be done to any complex geometry that we have here. So I wanted to show that off. Uh, back to this uh, slide here. So we took a look at how easy it is to do this, uh, how fast, and how we can get the best geometry um, in the least amount of time. And that saves us a lot and provides a lot of value. Now, I always get the question when talking about these sorts of things, uh, you know, okay, that's great. You did it on this nice radial face. What happens if I want to apply it against two faces that aren't exactly together or aren't, don't line up super well? Uh, so you could do that. You wouldn't have the ribs kind of matching up. Uh, we're working uh, a bit of R&D in internally to come up with a new way to do that, uh, which should be in the works. Um, I don't have any form of an ETA on that, so I can't, you can't hold me to it. I'm not going to give you a date. But uh, we're working on a way to do that better. Um, but for today, if you want to take a look at this video I have here, where it's an older Antop Live that I did showing how we can use Voronoi's to create ribs across these multiple faces. So it's not exactly going to be an isogrid. It's going to be more of a honeycomb. But you'll be able to do it against those complex uh, faces that aren't exactly a single surface. So that has a lot of advantage. So please take a look at that. And again, we do these and top lives every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So please keep tuning in. We uh, love hearing from you guys about what you want to see. Thanks.